the bison rut. When the most powerful animals in North America battle for mating rights. Today, I'm in one of the last places on Earth where this phenomenon still takes place, the northern range of Yellowstone National Park. Thousands of bison congregate here for the rut, turning the sagebrush-filled meadows into a massive, bison-filled battle arena. I had been quite busy recently, but I finally got the chance to go out and photograph some wildlife. And with it being mid-August, peak rutting season, I couldn't not go focus on the bison for an evening. As I drove through the park, I found bison seemingly everywhere. I basically just picked a spot along the roadside and pulled over, then let the action come to me. This time of year, male bison are going to be paired off with females that they'd like to mate with. When she gets close to being ready, the bulls can sense it. They do the lip curl you're seeing here, known in biology as the Fleming response, where they read the pheromones a cow is putting off to see if she's ready. When she's close, other bulls will move in and challenge the paired bull for his spot with the cow. This is when we see epic fights, like the one that started this video, break out. I was totally surrounded by bison, and I got some footage I liked of them, but unfortunately only came away with one photo I even slightly liked. Eventually, the sun dropped behind the mountains, and I watched and filmed with the last light of day that still lingered over the landscape. It didn't take long for it to be too dark to shoot, so I started the long drive back home as the rut continued around me. The drive came with its fair share of delays. Night doesn't stop these big beasts from rutting. The next day was supposed to be a cool, rainy one, so I decided to go look for something different, something I would likely only see out and about for an extended time in cooler weather. I left my home in Gardner, Montana a little later than anticipated, and after another traffic delay caused by one of the locals, climbed into the mountains of Yellowstone, where the storm the forecast had promised was brewing. As I got up into the Absaroka Mountains, I came across some cars stopped. Given the area and the number of cars, I knew this had to be a wildlife sighting. So I pulled over, stuck my lens out the window, and in the thick brush above me stood a young male grizzly bear. This bear, numbered G274, was a newcomer in the area, and he had made himself seen along the roadside pretty often throughout the summer. It didn't take him long to disappear into the lush berry bushes, so I continued on deeper into the park. Very quickly, I found another traffic jam just a few miles up the road. This time, it was exactly what I had come into the park for on this cool, wet day. Snow. And no, not that snow, that's for later in this vlog. I'm talking about a female grizzly, seen digging at the top of the hill in this clip, nicknamed Snow by local photographers. If you've watched my channel for a while, you've seen snow before. But as you'll notice today, things are a little different. Snow has cubs. Snow and her cubs quickly made their way down the slope, where she dug through a rock pile looking for marmots to eat. No luck in this pile, so she climbed back up the hill towards the east, a crowd of cars following as she did so. Just a little further down, she made another appearance close to the roadside. By now, Snow had given up on hunting marmots. Instead, She'd found herself a few lush, twinberry honeysuckle bushes loaded with fresh berries. I can't say I blame her. Those berries look delicious. And probably a little easier to catch than a marmot. I moved over to the passenger seat of my truck and rolled down the window. This made for the perfect makeshift tripod to film from without actually having to get out and set a tripod up. As Snow and her cubs feasted on berries, a crowd gathered below to watch them. Eventually, Snow moved even further down the slope to where she was right along the roadside. I repositioned my truck and was able to capture some beautiful, up-close moments of her and her tiny cubs. The trio continued to feed on the twin berries. The way in which bears feed throughout the year is all about timing. 
They maximize the nutritional value of food by focusing on different food sources at different times of the year based on when they are either easiest to obtain, most nutritious, or both. With berries, they are at their ripest and most nutritious in late summer and early fall, so this is when bears feed on them. After relieving the twinberry bushes of their berries, Snow decided it was time to cross the road. She disappeared into the thick forest for a moment, then popped back out about 15 yards further down the road, where they crossed. Or, more accurately put, walked down the middle of the road for a ways, then crossed. The bears began making their way through a mess of deadfall left by a forest fire, descending into a valley as they went. Before they were out of sight, Snow gave us a last few photo ops, including this photo, which is one of my favorite environmental portraits I've ever taken. To me, this photo perfectly encapsulates the environment that Snow makes a living in, and tells a story about how life will continue to thrive, even in the wake of a seemingly destructive forest fire. As the bears disappeared into the valley below, an even more intense storm moved in overhead. I decided that with no bears in sight, I would descend to lower elevations and try to shoot a time lapse of the storm moving over the landscape. I drove down out of the Absarokos and picked a scenic river delta along the banks of Yellowstone Lake. And this is what I captured. I love how this time lapse came out. One of the photos even has a lightning bolt hitting the lake in it. Did you catch it? I'll send out a free 8x12 print of my most popular photo, Long Live the Queen, to whoever comments the timestamp of the lightning bolt photo within the time lapse first. Once the storm cleared, I made my way back out of the park and down towards Gardner. Right before I got to town, I stumbled upon a couple of pronghorn in absolutely stunning light, and I just had to get out and take some photos. It happened so fast, I wasn't able to film anything, but here are the shots I got. Oh, no, wait, wrong shot, not, yeah, not, not that shot, um, that's, okay. Okay, there we go, this is what I was looking for. If you can't tell, pronghorn are one of my favorite animals in Yellowstone. They are so unique in that they are within their own family and look so similar to antelope, yet are not related at all. And while these guys may not be true antelope, I am excited to go see some actual antelope species when I take one of you guys, one of my subscribers, on a free African safari once I hit 100,000 subscribers. When I get to this milestone, I will select someone who is subscribed to this YouTube channel to join me in the Maasai Mara National Reserve, where we will photograph wildlife for days on end, all free of charge for you. So if you'd like to come with me on this trip, subscribe. You might just be the lucky winner when we get to the 100,000 milestone. Following this wonderful day in Yellowstone, I went to the Tetons for an overnight trip. I didn't have much time there, but I was fortunate enough to encounter Grizzly 399 with her Cub of the Year while I was there. This was the first time I had seen them since that fateful day in which they had emerged, and they were looking great. With just one cub, 399 had been able to feed like there was no tomorrow. That cub was as big as most yearling cubs are. I got two encounters with the pair, and while neither of them yielded any good photos, it was so encouraging to see them doing so well nonetheless. As I left the Tetons and made my way back into Yellowstone, I encountered another bear I'm familiar with, the Obsidian Sow. Numbered 815, she came out with three cubs this spring, and while they may have been smaller than 399's cub, they were looking healthy nonetheless. It was no more than a minute or two before they disappeared out of sight, but I'm still happy I got to see them up close and add them to what is quickly becoming a bear checkup vlog. A couple of weeks passed before I was able to get out and shoot again, and by the time that happened, fall was slowly creeping its way into the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. 
Wanting to capitalize on the fall colors while they lasted, I decided to drive up into the Beartooth Mountains, where the colors were peaking at this time. Generally speaking, I'm a large mammal photographer, but today, that wasn't the case. Today, I was out looking for one of the smaller inhabitants of this landscape, the American pika. These animals live in large boulder fields at high elevations throughout the Rocky Mountains, and I felt a photo of one of them surrounded by autumn colors would look fantastic. So I got out and began climbing my way through the talus, where the wind was howling, and something I hadn't seen in months was falling, snow. It took a bit of time, but eventually, I found what I was looking for. As quickly as I found it, the pika darted out of sight. I moved about in the talus for hours, and while I found many more pika in many different positions, I just couldn't find one with fall colors around it. For the most part, they were sticking low in the boulders, making it impossible for me to get the shot I was looking for. Eventually, I had to give up and move on. Otherwise, I'd be driving back home in the dark. I was disappointed I hadn't pulled off any shots, especially given how much time I spent out there, but at least I got to see the gorgeous fall colors on the alpine tundra. And while this try hadn't panned out, a future one did. While I was in the North Cascades this October, I got another opportunity to photograph pika in fall colors, and I captured one of my favorite shots I've ever taken while I was there. This particular photo shoot won't be featured in a vlog, but if you'd like to read about it, I wrote a whole story on the experience in my newly started newsletter, which you can sign up for on my website using the link in the description. Well, my try for animals in fall colors hadn't worked out yet, so I decided to focus on something else fall is good for. I went out to the northern border of Yellowstone on a cool, rainy morning, where, with a bit of looking, I found a herd of elk. Fall is rutting season, or mating season, for these guys, and at the time, the rut was in full swing. So guys, I am here in Yellowstone shooting the elk rut. Um, just had some elk walk across this hill here in front of Electric Peak, and I got some really cool footage there. Um, missed some environmental portraits on that hill that I really would have liked. I'm kind of disappointed, um, but still can't complain about what I got. Got some great footage, got a few okay photos. Definitely need to come back though to focus on getting some better photos, some stuff I like more. Uh, so I'll be back later this evening um, to hopefully get some photos that I like. Well, I didn't end up going back that evening. Instead, I headed deeper into the park. As you saw in one of these clips, there was fresh snow on Electric Peak, which meant there would likely also be fresh snow at other high elevations in the park. One of the many mother grizzlies we focused on in this video happens to live in one of those high elevation areas, that bear being snow. So my goal for the rest of the day was to capture snow in the snow. It doesn't take long for these autumn snows to melt, so time really is of the essence. If I was going to make this happen, I had to go today. When I got into Snow's territory, Snow the Bear I mean, there was snow on the ground and it was still falling around me. The conditions were perfect and I spent the entire day driving back and forth through the area, looking for any sign of snow under cubs. If I could find them, the shots would be just magical. I did find some signs, in fact, these tracks belonged to one of Snow's cubs, but no bears to be seen. Unfortunately, despite hours and hours I spent searching, I found no bears in the snow. By the time I made it back to the area the next day, the snow had already melted away. I stopped at Fishing Bridge General Store and bought myself a quick lunch. After sitting down and eating it outside, I went back into the mountains. And while there may not have been any snow this time, I did finally find a bear.
Continuing with our bear checkup, this is Jam. You've seen Jam on my channel before, but this time, much like Snow, things are a little different for her. Her mother Raspberry kicked her out this spring, and so Jam is now an adult bear on her own. And much like the other grizzlies I saw this season, she's doing great. She looks fat and healthy, and before she disappeared from sight, it was clear the park had treated her well this summer. All was quiet after Jam disappeared, so I went to another area of the park to focus on other opportunities. At this time, there was a bull elk carcass about 400 yards off the roadside. It had been there a few days now, and oddly enough, nothing big had moved in on it yet, but I was hoping tonight would be our lucky night. Quite a crowd had gathered to watch the scene, so I set up and joined them. Aside from an eagle and a handful of ravens, nothing was on it at the moment. The birds feasted for quite a while, and as they did so, the moon rose while the sun dipped behind the trees. Finally, just a few minutes before it got too dark to shoot, a massive dark grizzly bear cruised in on the carcass, scaring the birds away as he came. The bear sat down next to the carcass, surveyed the area for a moment, and then dug in. Eventually, he decided he was going to roll the carcass to try and get to other parts of it. It took him a moment, and quite a lot of pulling, but he did finally get it rolled over. As darkness fell, the bear continued to feed. Despite the scene being pretty far away, and it being almost dark, I was still able to pull off some pretty clean footage using the 8K shooting mode on the Canon R5. Within a few minutes, it was too dark to shoot, so I packed up my gear and headed home for the night. The next morning was an early one for me. I had plans to go to the Tetons on October 1st, and the date at the time was September 29th. I really wanted to see Snow and her cubs one last time before I left, and I was running out of time very quickly. I made the two hour drive from Gardner to Snow's territory early in the morning, and by the time I got there, the sun was just beginning to pop out over the tops of the peaks and clouds. Thankfully today, unlike some of the other days I'd spent up here, it didn't take much looking to find Snow. The crowd had already found her before me. So I parked, got my camera out, and walked over to the scene where people were already standing and shooting. Snow and her cubs moved about in the deadfall, foraging on grasses, roots, and forbs. Snow knew winter was coming, and she was doing everything possible to fatten up in time for it. So far, she seemed to be doing a pretty good job preparing. Just look at how big and healthy she looks. Soon, the bears moved further up the roadside, and the crowd followed. The sun was higher in the sky by now, and the bears were backlit, allowing me to capture some nice footage of them moving through a golden meadow. The bears happened upon a bison, but they didn't seem too concerned with it. They moved back into a shady area and continued foraging, and I sat atop the hill and filmed as they did so. I shot a lot of footage of the meeting, but I made sure to put down the camera for a bit too. Sometimes it's just as fulfilling, if not more fulfilling, to just get to watch bears be bears in this magnificent mountain ecosystem. Finally, Snow and her cubs reached the head of the valley, where the hill sloped up and the road crossed over. The trio climbed up to the roadside, then, one at a time, made a dash for it, crossing the guardrail and disappearing into the forest on the other side. 
Bear management did a great job of managing the scene to ensure that all three bears made it safely across and weren't separated by the large crowd of watchers that had formed nearby. And just like that, my time with snow in 2023 had come to an end. To the south, the Tetons loomed, foreshadowing my next adventure, where I would spend a week in Grand Teton National Park during the peak of autumn, photographing everything from moose to bears to great gray owls against a vibrant array of warm fall colors and jagged mountain peaks. I would venture to say it's my favorite photography trip I've ever taken, and while it won't be in this video, it'll be in the next one. I'll see you there soon.